and this is going to count. <laughs> so, Joe from Swingers Kettlebell and Strength from Tony, Kentucky. We want to talk about a, lot, a big, not argument out there, but definitely something that a lot of people need to know when they're getting into kettlebells. Um, every kettlebell company, every style, every it, it can even be different from mold to mold. They're different, just like every person is very, very different depending on lever length. So, geometry and all this stuff. The biggest talk that I get asked about online is, for beginners, obviously that's great. I love to focus on getting people into using kettlebells, whether you're a strong man that wants to use a different thing or a bodybuilder that's transitioning to use kettlebells or just a person that's never lifted before. We want to teach you the safe way from, so no, no, nobody gets hurt. Um, now the biggest thing is when I see people that say that these types of kettlebells, the ones that you can buy, they're really they're prominent out there in stores, online, uh, high schools, colleges. So a lot of people know these, I'm not going to bring up names, but basically the kettlebell looks like this, that gets larger in diameter as the weight gets because they're solid, they're cast. So, solid bell. Now, we're going to talk handles because this is where <clears throat> we get a lot of the conversations. When someone says, everyone gets hurt, their wrists hurt. If you're doing them improperly, I understand it's the same as Olympic lifting. If you're doing it properly, you're going, you could possibly hurt yourself. Um, so now kettlebells, people are saying that no matter what, these small kettlebells can hurt your wrists. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about why. And I'm also going to talk about why I don't think that that's it's going to hurt everybody. It's just the way that you do it. And a lot of people have been shown to hold a kettlebell right in the middle. So when they clean, this is what it looks like. And they've seen a lot of the really rough, I don't want to name styles, I could care less about that stuff. But just the way they're taught with kettlebells. If they're not taught to catch the, to get this weight as it comes up and to get into a hand placement with a 45 degree angle across the wrist, hook the thumb in the corner post. Now, my hand through that is just like this, okay? This is how I would hit something. Uh, I'm not hitting like this. I'm not holding the kettlebell in the middle like this. Now here's where I see that people can say that the kettlebell hurts your wrist because now I've gripped it tight and I'm activating the wrist flexors, finger, fle finger flexors, and I'm creating a lock basically on the kettlebell. That is not necessary. Here's what we want to do. Right now, I have very, very little pressure. I have dissipated all this weight. Now on these weights, there's a lot of weight of this 18, you know, it's an eight kilogram, eight kilogram kettlebell, it's 17.6 pounds. I've dissipated that weight into the handle and the bell. Now when I do this and I grab in the middle, like people, pick up a kettlebell without being instructed or watching the best YouTube video out there. They could watch something that we made, something that the world's best instructors do. The video tells you one thing, but you might not be doing it that exactly correctly. You might not be following the video. You might think that this is how it is. Because you don't have the video, can't reach out and change you. So if I saw someone holding this weight, I'm going to move their hand so it's it's a, basically a false grip. People understand that. So now, this weight is back off of the wrist. It's not on the bones. It's kind of on a little bit of the muscle tissue, but it's dissipated in a 45 degree angle across. And this is, goes for the same for all of these kettlebells. These are competition style. A lot of people know that. A lot of people know they're competition style. They're larger. They stay the same roughly the same size. 
Just like your bumper plates in Olympic lifting, a 10 is this tall, so it creates the bar this high. A 45 is the same height, creates the bar at the same level. So once you understand how to use 10s, you can increase without changing your form. If I go from here to the same pink in this weight, it's going to be very different. Now, a lot of people think that the bigger the bell, kettlebell sport is meant for high repetitions. Oh, that's fine. You can use these too. But the, the larger weight, this will dissipate more of the pressure. But that's not saying that you can't use these. I'm going to show a little clean in this messy land of chalk. So instead of cleaning very fast and just really lots of hips, you can teach someone how to do a thumb forward and more of a So I'm keeping, I'm bringing that weight up. Now what I can do is insert the hand when the kettlebell is weightless. It's weightless right where I want it to be. So I can guide it to where I want it to be. That weight is not hitting me because it doesn't revolve around the wrist. This is not happening. We're not getting a flip. I'm taking the weight up. I can catch it this way. Or I can do thumb forward. I can get chalk in my beard. Notice where I'm catching. There's not so much pressure back here. It's all dissipated. <clears throat> this is a loose grip. This is not very tight. This is keeping from getting some tennis and golfer's elbow. Now, kettlebell, different. Now, when you're doing the competition kettlebell, the same, it can go to the same thing. If I'm holding them, or differently, or if the kettlebell companies are making You can see that, can't you? See a difference? Not all kettlebells are created the same. I can't get my hand as far. Higher, shorter, wider. So now let's go and play here. I'm trying to put my hand through here at a 45 degree angle. So if I line this weight up, coming straight away from me, and it's down the midline with my spine. It's lined up with my spine. Shoulders out here, and I take it forward at a 45 degree angle. I've made several videos on this before. Look where I'm at. So here, this is still loose. This is not the handle for the kettlebell. There is where you're ripping. And that's different, it's another, that's another book. So basically up top, <clears throat> I'm not gripping right in the middle, okay? Especially for kettlebell sport. And if you're going for high repetitions, this is what we want because we're trying to, di we're trying to dissipate energy, we're trying to decrease injury. Just like running the marathon versus running a, a 5K, there's a big difference. Start getting hot, your joints start getting beat up, you start losing focus. Anyway, you get that. Kettlebell sport is the marathon of lifting. Weights for a long time, up to 10 minutes. Some places even do mar like marathons, hours, longer, just depends. But your traditional kettlebell sport is 10 minute time cap. Okay, so now from this weight, we're gonna go over here. You notice how I put my hand through here? Look where my arm's at, okay? So there's how I would hold this kettlebell overhead. You notice the difference? Look how long this handle is. Look how wide. Look where it hits. This is going to affect my geometry for my insertion. 
This is going to affect the ge geometry for my cleans, snatches, everything. So let's go back to a kettlebell that was one of the first kettlebell sport. This is one of the first, and it has a shorter. See, the thing about this is kettlebells, kettlebell competition, are re competition bells are meant for one hand. That's why people don't like doing swings with, because you're, it doesn't fit. I can put three fingers on each hand into this weight. So when I'm swinging, or doing a general fitness swing or something, they are meant for one hand. Proper, properly balanced kettlebell will feel great in one hand. Now this keeps going, depends on where you change. You might have this grip, with the weight this way. You might have a grip back here with the weight going this way. And then just to change just depends on how you insert your arm. Some people rotate and have the weight. This kettlebell should do one flip on the way up. One flip. Okay? So made a couple videos on that. But one flip. Instead of flipping it, you're inserting your hand as it travels up on the way up. Or for the people that do thumb forward grip, it's going slightly the outside and you're inserting your hand this way. This shouldn't be beating you up. This should not be doing this. This should not be rotating and slamming, okay? If you're doing snatches and the kettlebell's flipping over your hand, slamming you every time, go back to your cleans. Make them better. So let's go back to a couple other brands. Here's a kettlebell, competition kettlebell. Great feel. It has beveled edges at 45 degree angles. It's flat. You've seen some companies online that are making these. And people are like, oh, these are great. They dissipate the weight. That's awesome. They're not legal in competition. So if you get used to using these, and then you go to a weight that is your competition, let's say IKFF, AKA, whatever, and you can't use these that you're accustomed to, you've wasted a whole lot of time. Now, you might want to use these for overtraining. I do that. For going, for pushing for overload stuff, so I'm not putting a lot more pressure. You get pressure on your feet the longer you walk. Now, everything just depends on what you want to do. So now, here's another one. The posts, you have to think about the posts. Do they come down straight? Do they curve? Are they really upright? Are they upright? Check this. They are all different. We have 33 millimeter handles. 33, 35, 35 millimeter handles, 35 millimeter handles. We have a little bit taller. That all changes the geometry. If this is taller, and I go to rotate that kettlebell, that means the weight is in the, in the main part of the bell, the weight is farther away from my hand. It's like swinging a, a bucket. Now if you get something shorter, like these people, they're fast. Now some of these kettlebells, the weight is real close here. And that affects how things feel. It's very, very different. So my point is, you have to find a kettlebell that fits you. I found a kettlebell that fits me wonderfully. Here's a brand new one, here's a brand new one. Here's one that's been used for over a year with its partner over here. <clears throat> what a wonderful fit for me. And I think overall the kettlebell is, has more benefits than, for how I train, than all the others. Um, some kettlebells act hit down here, because remember, you're hitting and you want to clean in that. It's not hitting me. It's dissipated the weight. I am not slamming. I'm not getting pressure contusion here. You've got to think about, though, when you're in that 45 degree angle, that this post is connected to your forearm. This post down here, this thumb has created a lock. I don't need to squeeze and grip, because overhead, my, it's going with my shoulder. It's not doing this. It's not wobbling. We're not doing like, I see a lot of bodybuilders that do false grip. They'll, this is what they'll do with kettlebells. And they'll press like this. 
they might take this and they'll do stuff like that's not what we want get in that corner from here notice I don't have a hand wide open I'm not gripping death grip on it I have almost like I'm punching and it's loose my thumb is controlling forefinger can control this is locked here now some that's where you get into this edge very different between manufacturers molds styles even if all these are competition kettlebells here's where I get a whole lot of issue right here because there's not much if you people don't think there's a lot of stuff here